Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about Gay-Lussac's Law. Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac was a French scientist that lived in the 17 and 1800s and he states that if the mass and volume of a gas remains constant then the pressure and Kelvin temperature of that gas will be directly proportional. So if we take a look, we have a graph over here and on the x-axis we have the temperature of the gas in Kelvin and we have the pressure of the gas on the y-axis. And uh, according to uh, Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac, if the temperature of a gas is increasing, then the pressure of that gas will also increase as long as you keep the volume and number of moles or mass of that gas constant. In fact, if we take a look closely, if the temperature of the gas is doubling, the pressure of the gas will double. If the temperature of the gas is quadrupling, then the pressure of the gas will also quadruple. And if we go the other way and decrease the temperature by a factor of one half, then the pressure of that gas will also decrease by a factor of one half. So let's take a look here. In this example here, we have three containers filled with a gas. Each one of these containers is filled with five moles of gas, and the volume of gas that is in these containers is 500 liters. Furthermore, this container right here is inflexible. It's a rigid container so that it cannot expand and it cannot contract. And right here in this container here, we've got a gas exerting a pressure of two atmospheres at a temperature of 200 K. If we take a look in this next container here, the temperature has doubled. The temperature has gone from 200 K to 400 K, right? So it's gone from 200 K to 400 K. And we want to know what the pressure of the gas inside this container will be. Well, according to Gay-Lussac, if the temperature is doubling, then the pressure too will double. So this answer right here will be four atmospheres, provided that the volume and number of moles of that gas stays constant. If we take a look over here, the pressure of the gas that is in this container has dropped. It has dropped by a factor of one-fourth. It has gone from four atmospheres to one atmosphere. So in order, uh, the reason that this has happened is because the temperature here will also be cut by one-fourth to 100 Kelvin. Okay, so Gay-Lussac states once again that if the volume and number of moles of a gas are held constant, then the pressure and temperature of that gas will be directly proportional. If the temperature doubles from 200 to 400, the pressure is going to double from two to four atmospheres. If the pressure is being cut by a factor of one-fourth here, or decreasing by one-fourth, it's because the temperature is also decreasing by a factor of one-fourth. Now, if we take a look closely, what we'll see is this. The starting pressure divided by the starting temperature here is 1 over 100, if we simplify this. And the final pressure divided by the final temperature is also 1 over 100, if we simplify this. And same right here. If we take the pressure divided by the temperature, we get 1 over 100. So what Lussac's law, or Lussac's law, is telling us is that the starting pressure of a gas divided by the starting temperature of a gas will always be equal to the final pressure of that gas divided by the final temperature. If you don't like fractions, what we can do is we can cross multiply to get rid of the fractions and we'll end up with the formula that we have right here. P1T2 equals P2T1 where P1 is the starting pressure, T2 is the final temperature, P2 is the final pressure, and T1 is the starting temperature. And when we work with this formula, we need to make sure that the temperature units are always in Kelvin, never degrees Celsius, always in Kelvin, and that the pressure units are always the same, whether it's atmospheres or tors, it doesn't matter, as long as both of these pressure units are the same. So let's take a look at a few examples. In this problem here, it says a gas exerts 4.5 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. How much pressure will it exert at 50 degrees Celsius? We're going to assume constant temperature and mass in this problem. So in this problem, let's take a look. We have a gas exerting this much pressure. So this right here is going to be P1 at this temperature. This right here will be T1. The question says how much pressure so we're asked to find how much pressure this gas will exert after its temperature is increasing to 50 degrees Celsius. Now before we can just start plugging numbers in, we need to make sure that the temperature is in Kelvin, which it is not. So what we need to do first is convert the Celsius temperature or Celsius temperatures to Kelvin. And how do we convert Celsius to Kelvin? 
we take the Celsius temperature and we add 273. If you were going the other way, you would subtract 273. So in this problem right here, we know that P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1, and we're asked to solve for P2 here. So the way that I get P2 all by itself on one side of that equal sign is to divide both sides by T1. We'll divide by T1 here. We'll divide by T1 here. These guys will cancel. And the formula that we're going to use to solve this is P2 equaling P1 T2 all over T1. So what is P1 in this problem? Looks like it's 4.5 atmospheres. What is T2 in this problem? Well, if we convert this to Kelvin, it's 323K. And T1 is going to be 298K if we convert it to Kelvin. So T2 is 323K. And this is all going to be divided by T1, which is 298K. We'll get our calculator out, and it looks like this is going to end up, let me plug this in here, 4.5 times 323 divided by 298 and I'm going to round my answer to the thousandths place and we get 4.878 4.878 what? well the Kelvin units will cancel out leaving you with atmospheres so does this answer make sense? well let's take a look as the temperature is slightly increasing from 298 to 323 K, it looks like according to Gay-Lussac that the pressure should also increase slightly. And in fact it does. It goes from 4.5 to 4.878 atmospheres. Let's take a look at another problem. Alright, in this problem it says a gas has its pressure decreased from 760 torres to 320 torres at 225 K. What was the initial temperature of the gas? So the question here is, what is the initial temperature? So we're asked to find the initial temperature, or T1 in this case. When the, uh, it says right here, a gas has its pressure decreasing from this. So this is P1 to this. So this is P2. And it looks like this is going to be T2. Okay. So before we can even begin, let's make sure the temperature units are in Kelvin and they are. Let's make sure the pressure units are the same. We have tors here and we have tors here so we're good. So let's go ahead and work this problem out. Okay, We know that P1 times T2 is going to equal P2 times T1 and in this problem we're asked to solve for T1. So I need to cancel out P2 and the formula I'm going to use to solve this problem will be T1 equaling P1 T2 all over P2. We can now plug our units in or our variables in. P1 it looks like is going to be 760 tors times T2 which is 225k divided by P2 which is 320 tors get a calculator out. We'll take 760 times 225 divided by 320. Once again we'll round this to the thousandths place and we end up with 534 whoops, 534.375 what? We have tours on top, tours on bottom. They can cancel, leaving you with Kelvin. So the initial temperature of this gas must have been 534.375K. And as its temperature decreases to 225K, it looks like the pressure will also decrease from 760 to 320K. Let's take a look at one final example. In this example, it says a gas at 45 degrees Celsius and 3.2 atmospheres has its pressure increased to two uh, to, to five atmospheres what will its final temperature be so we're asked to calculate the final temperature 
So we're asked to find T2 in this problem here. It looks like the gas is starting off right here at 45 degrees Celsius at a pressure of 3.2 atmospheres and its pressure is going to increase to this right here. So if the pressure is increasing to 5 atmospheres, it looks like our final answer should be uh, larger than this right here. But before we can plug this in, we have to convert this to Kelvin. Remember, to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273. 273 plus 45. 318. So T1 is 318 and it looks like our final answer should be more than 318. If we don't get more than 318 we're doing something wrong. Alright so our pressure units are atmospheres and atmospheres they're the same so now we can just go ahead and begin with this problem. We know that P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1 and in this problem we're asked to find T2. So I have to divide both sides by P1 and I'll get the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem. T2 is going to be equal to P2T1 all over P1. P2 in this problem, it says it's 5 atmospheres times T1, 318K. And we're going to divide this by P1, which is 3.2 atms. So we'll get a calculator out and we'll take 5 times 318 divided by 3.2. We'll round to the thousands place and we end up with 496.875. 496.875 what? If you take a look here, atmospheres will cancel out, leaving us with Kelvin. So the final temperature ends up being 496.875 Kelvin. Does that make sense? Yeah, it looks like it makes sense. As the pressure increases from 3.2 to 5 atmospheres, the temperature isn't quite doubling. It's going from 318 to 496.875 since the pressure is not quite doubling. So this is Gayla Sachs Law, and I hope this was helpful.